Hey church family, if you're familiar with the Old Testament story of Daniel, then you know that after the Babylonians conquered Israel, they took some of those that they'd conquered and transported them back to Babylon. Among those were Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. After taking them captive, the king of Babylon, a man by the name of Nebuchadnezzar, set about a process to try and Babylonianize those that he'd taken captive. Part of this process involved giving Daniel and his friends new names. The Jewish name Daniel means God is my judge. But that name was taken away from Daniel, and he was assigned the name Belteshazzar, which means Bel, protect the king. Now that may not mean much to you and me, but Bel was the Babylonian term for Lord, and it could refer to any of the Babylonian gods. So anytime someone spoke Daniel's new name, they were basically saying, God save the king. Nebuchadnezzar gave Daniel this name as part of his attempt to conform Daniel into the image of Babylon. That really shouldn't surprise us because that's something that the world is always trying to do to God's children. This is why the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians living in Rome and told them, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Paul issued those words of warning because he knew that the world is constantly trying to remake us to be like they are, to reshape us, to conform us to their image. So what can we do? Well, the short answer is that you and I can dare to be a Daniel. Again, part of King Nebuchadnezzar's plan was to reshape Daniel and introduce him to a new diet. We're told the king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. They would be trained for three years and after that, they were to enter the king's service. We read on further in Daniel's story, and we're told that Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now, I'm sure Daniel wasn't thrilled when he was given a new, new, a new name. After all, he'd been called Daniel for probably as long as he could remember. However, there was no biblical command that prohibited an Israelite from taking on a new name. However, when it came to the food that he ate, well, that was another matter. Under Old Testament law, some foods were deemed clean and others were deemed unclean. It wouldn't have been the easiest thing in the world for Daniel to stand firm on the biblical instructions. It would have been easier for him to say, I'm going to ignore these. Daniel could have figured, sometimes you just need to go along to get along. He could have figured, hey, I'm far from home, and what happens in Babylon stays in Babylon. No one will ever know. He could have made all sorts of excuses, but the fact is, Daniel wasn't looking for an excuse because he was living with a purpose. He'd made an internal commitment. He had purposed in his heart not to defile himself. And the result was that God blessed him and used him mightily. I pray that you and I would dare to be a Daniel, that we'd be people of integrity, not live in one way on Sunday and then an altogether different way the rest of the week, but instead living a life that's based on conviction, not convenience. Living a life where our number one desire is to please the Lord, whether that makes us popular with others or not. Amen.